Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Kaga, and yes, it's been a long time. A very, very long time as a point of fact. So, it's been a little over two months. Well, actually it's been two months and one week since I last put up a video, and to the best of my intentions, I tried to get videos done, and well, things happened. Lots of life stuff happened. All kinds of wonderful graduate school work. Um, might as well get the big kettle of fish out of the room right now. I also am involved in helping organize a small anime convention not far from where I live. And, well, that happens to get out there on Memorial Day weekend every year. And, well... Being involved in organizing it means that I lose a lot of my personal time to that and to my graduate studies, as I have already noted to you. So, and I, I guess I could have gotten these videos up like a week ago, but you know, thing matches like this happened, a lot of matches like this happened and one thing led to another, and uh, I don't know. There's just something about, you know, you, you come back after taking a, a fairly sizable break and get your first real good game in, and you, it's like you're hooked for a while and you just can't tear yourself from it. Something like that, right? I think we've all experienced that, and I certainly am no exception to this. Though, on the fortunate side of things, I can show you this wonderful beast from War Thunder, and yes, this is a beast. This is the J7W1, and you are looking at this thing 100% right out of the box. You just spent your 360,000 Silver Lions and 100,000 Silver Lions on crew training, and here you are. You have yourself a J7W1. It is very unique in that it is that uh, pusher-type aircraft. It's this tiny wings, little canards up in the front help control attitude. Oh, hey, I've, I've spotted some bombers to dive on, and... This is one of those th types of prey the J7 loves to kill. This bombers and other large aircraft because tucked away in that tiny little nose are four. That's right, four 30 millimeter cannons. And who put that B-17 there? It's a little close for comfort. Let's turn back around. That thing got close, a little too close. Those of you who play um, air realistic battles can probably vouch for that one kilometer is a little closer than most of us would like to get to bombers because of those lethal AI gunners and their magical ammunition which explodes aircraft with a single bullet. But today we are the ones doing the exploding. Well, let me rephrase that. We're the ones making others explode. <clears throat> so, you know, this is your typical Japanese aircraft. It's light, it's fairly maneuverable. It has some issues with, at low speed, as you would expect from the small control surfaces. The small, and I do mean it not just like the ailerons and the elevators and the canards, but also the left-right authority from the twin rudders is not as strong as it could be. This thing has its small list of shortcomings, one of which is very, very low ammunition loadout. This thing's got 240 rounds between all four of its cannons, which means each cannon only gets 60 rounds of ammo. So every time you see a tracer go out, that's, you know, four shells out of each gun. So... You see one flash, you see two flash, well, you just actually ended up firing about, you know, eight rounds. <laughs> it's not a happy... It's not happy. 
Another thing that is a severe limiter on this is... You see where that propeller is? Yeah. That makes landing a royal pain in the ass. And I suspect that most people, when they get this aircraft for the first time, they're used to doing their usual flares, they're used to doing things more or less like a normal aircraft, and they spotch about, you know, a dozen or so landings, and this was not a perfect landing. No way was this perfect. There were issues with this landing. A little too much roll, too much, you know, not expecting how the aircraft wants to counter roll it. But, you know, at least we didn't flip our lid, you know? At least we didn't end up like this guy. Who was probably drunk off his ass, according to his squadron mate. But, you know, I think we've all been there, right? I think we've all had that drunk moment in War Thunder, because if you can't take a joke, you're probably playing the wrong game. So, here we are. We're freshly out of ammo. We're freshly on the landing field. And we're here to wait out our approximate 30 seconds for rearmament. And there's that glimmer of hope when I see Trippy Miggy over there in the A6M5 that I'm going to get an air spawn. And hopefully, yes, we get an air spawn. Yes. <laughs> Nothing can stop me now. So, one of those nice things that I, I love about the Japanese tech tree is that you can more or less tell how an aircraft is going to want to be flown by the designation. You have the the boom and zoom dive fighters that are in the, the key numbers. So like, um, definitely one of the ones that's been featured on this channel a lot is the key 61 in all of its flavors. Another one that is very good at this is the key 84 in all of its flavors and I've I do have the key 84 hey hey the 30 millimeter equipped one but I just haven't put it up on the channel yet at least don't recall putting up on the channel but the other two have made their appearance on this channel the other one and probably the more fun for a lot of people is the ones with the a designation which is as you might guess is an attack aircraft it's the the it's typified by that turn fighting style that we come to know and expect of the Zero. And the other one, those beginning with J, those very much are the interceptors. Very good rates of climb. They're a little picky in the rolls. They want to go in, they want to go out. They do a lot of damage while they're there, but they're only there for a short while. And then they got to go say hi to the relatives, go back to the airfield, you know, play it safe. So right now, we're looking at the situation right now, and I'm just doing my usual climb out business. We, we must get altitude. Altitude is choice and speed is life. If I'm short of one, I'm not happy. And with a Tempest going to the airfield, I'm going to say, fuck it. I am not going that way. Nope, 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 nope. So let's go see. And at this point in the proceedings, this is my first using usage of J7W1 in a ground strike. And I don't have the 460 kilogram bombs that this thing can carry. So. Let's see how the cannons work. They're 30 millimeter, right? They should have some decent penetration. They should have some good explosive power. Let's try these AA nests. Oh, okay, 12 rounds there. There, screw up the lateral a little bit there in the roll, but we still crack down it. That's two, three, and ponder the fourth, but that, that nope, we think better of that. So, Gonna go up, gain some more altitude, and damn, we're cleaning house over here. Scrambling to get some more of these ground kills in. Ammo's not gonna last forever. Okay, here it is. There's a tank. Let's see how this Stuart likes this, huh? Nope, Stuart did not like it. I, 
think he was very allergic. Mmm, not good for Stuart. Okay, once might be luck. Let's try it a second time. There you are. And you know what's the amazing thing? I'm looking at this on the tiny screen right now, and it's definitely is amazing that I can pick these up now out of the brush, you know? All right, turning back around. Hmm. Are there any, are there any left in there? Let's cut the engine. Let's give ourselves a little more time to look. Oh, there's, there's one. Okay, get the speed back up. Look in. Which way is he going? Yep, there we go. Pull up a little bit. Scan for targets. Roll over a little bit. Rolled a little too much there. Too much. Too much roll. Okay, okay, okay. We we can clear it. Alright, that's good. Put in a little bit more for cheeky good measure. Okay, now remember that thing I said about um, low ammunition capacity? Yeah. I'm out of ammo again. I don't even know what just happened with that one. So, I'm pretty certain that there was something up with my internet connection at the time. I'm still trying to actually go through and do my own IT work and holy... But is someone behind me? Trippy. Quit tripping the rift. Quit tripping the rift. It's an ally over here. Nope. Nope. Okay, it wouldn't be War Thunder if someone didn't try to team kill you. So, yeah. <clears throat> I'm still trying to debug exactly what is up with the, my internet right now. As I don't seem to have issues on any other terminal than the one I use for gaming. And I suspect that there's something up with the actual network connection device, i.e. my wireless. So I'm going to have to take a little closer look at that in the coming days because if that thing keeps dropping out, it makes uploading these giant videos a bit of a chore. It actually just outright makes it unreliable. All right, back to the replay. So I think I've learned a little bit about how to land this thing from that earlier attempt. Or I shouldn't say attempt. I actually stuck it. So yes, that first landing of this replay. So I think I learned a fair bit there, so I'm coming in more or less level at this point, trying to minimize that vertical drop I need to do, lowering the throttle a little bit, trying to increase that glide so I can bleed some energy and keep more or less a level flight path. Well, it's not really level, I'm, I'm dropping, right? So we're trying to keep it under like about five degree, about the five degree mark so that we can glide, maintain speed, and bleed the speed. And by that, I mean maintain enough speed that I don't go into the drink because this runway is short. So I don't want to go into the drink in front and I don't want to go into the drink in back. Both are crashes, both are bad. And if team killing uh, ally is, or someone who's trying to team kill us is any indication then yes, I will want to hedge my bets and not crash. I might lose the match if I do. And I'd have to say, that was a fl nearly flawless landing. Someone please, get on the case of that last airline captain that I took off with a while ago, man. That guy had a rough sense on how to take off. Yes, I'm making the comparison because that guy, and I could tell it was the vice captain in that case, was taking off because when that one was not a very good takeoff. Whereas later on, when the captain took control, he had, even amidst of, you know, the turbulent and stormy weather that tends to plague my area during the springtime, this guy stuck a perfect landing. And now back to the gameplay. I am more than aware of the fact that someone has been taking pot shots at my nice propellered ass. So I'm going to make use of the fact that I've got better rate of climb and that I spot respawned about 20 seconds earlier, gain some altitude, gain some speed, because I don't like dodging bullets. 
I get really frustrated when they're friendly bullets, though there is no such thing as a friendly bullet. Somebody please tell me why it's called friendly fire. It's not friendly. It is most certainly not friendly. So right now, this is technically a three verse one, two J7W1s and an A6M5 up against that Tempest. And right now, both my allies are on the deck. So I need to gain some altitude again because there are two options. If this guy's smart, he'd go after me. I am obviously the more potent threat because I'm at a higher altitude. But of course, this is online gaming, so what does he do? Goes after the other J7 who's on the deck. Messes up his attack run a little bit. Coming under consistent 30 mil fire and he's promptly running for his life. And the Tempest is actually quite good at this because it has a very, very good speed in the climb. And as you can see, he's keeping them at arm's length outside of gunnery distance. And yes, I'm still a little wary of Trippy down there. I'm sitting there waiting for him to take the shot and I'm half tempted to wait for this Tempest to make that turn or half tempted to dive on Trippy. I don't know which right now. But the Tempest makes his turn. He comes in, messes it up a little bit. Trippy engages. English decides to screw this. Screw this. I'm gonna come in, roll. Oh, nope, he's not going that way. Roll back. Roll back, turn, turn. Get the speed back up. Get the speed back up. Come in, pull, 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 pull. Hit, just, and the pilot's gone. We're good, pull on off. So, anyway. No fancy closing today, just a nice clean kill. And I hope you look forward to more content to come on the channel. I've got a fair bit of War Thunder to share, some spare footage I had from a while back. Don't know about what I say at the end of those videos, but we'll see. I'm going to try to get back to regular programming as I had before. Thank you, and good day.